Good morning. Welcome to Website Wednesday. It is home day. You like that commercial? <laughs> I love it. I am going to record a full website review. I actually recorded this um, with just a specific question that Sarah had, but now we're going to do a full website review. So this is the homepage for Sarah Lindsay Photography. And first of all, Sarah, high five for putting yourself out there. I know it's always hard to get constructive feedback, right? Like to hear that something is not as fabulous as you thought is difficult. Um, and I actually just had this experience. Someone sent me some information about something that I had posted too. So it's important to be open to that. So high five for doing that. Um, and we're just going to go do, do a full website review. So this is the home page. I love the very simple gallery at the top. It is the most important thing, right? Is your work. However, the one thing I'm missing above the fold, which means before I have to scroll is going to be a call to action of some sort. So, um, what do you want people to do when they get to your website? Maybe they've already followed you on Instagram for six months and they're like, I already know I don't need to read the rest of your website. I already know that I want to contact you. So give them a call to action, whether it's to contact you or to read more or to check out this post or whatever it is, have a call to action above the fold. People need to be told what to do. I know that sounds so stupid and we're like, but they know what to do. And there's a contact thing right here. It doesn't matter. Tell them what to do. Give them a call to action, whether it's on top of a photo or you could even put a button right here. And I actually thought that this right here was a button because I was hoping to have that call to action up here. So the one piece of feedback that I would give you on the homepage, just kind of the base uh, above the fold piece is going to be to have that call to action. So as we scroll down, this is fabulous that you have text on your homepage. This is an opportunity that so many photographers miss out on. So it is a wonderful, wonderful thing that you have text on your homepage and the hello and welcome. I feel like this, like, uh, it, it looks like a button to me. Like I'm trying to click on it and it doesn't click. So that might be something it's nitpicky. It's small. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's not a deal breaker for sure. One thing that you had asked about specifically, Sarah, was whether you use I and we too much versus talking from the client's perspective. So I am going to talk about that a little bit in this section because there's a lot of we's in here. <laughs> so there we have one, two, three, four, um, five, six, seven. We have seven we's and I probably missed a couple. Um, it is a lot. It's a lot of we's. And one thing that I would also caution you on is with your business being your name, which there's nothing wrong with that. I actually think that that is preferable, but people are going to assume you, right? They're going to assume Sarah, just like with my website, people are going to assume Brooke and that is normal and that is natural. However, when they see a we, they're going to wonder who we is, is that Sarah and her team? Because there's no mention of Sarah anywhere. And I actually, um, the team is over here, so that's good. And it's good that you have that information, but you might want to put some information here as well. That kind of goes into who the we is. That sounds like such a weird sentence. So I would also want to reframe how you're speaking to people. So when it comes to what you offer someone and the problem that you're fixing for someone and what someone else may be going through in their lives, that is all language that you can use that will not have eyes or we's at all. It can be things like you are probably facing a transition in your life, whether it's going off to college or maybe it's sending your daughter off to college or your son or talk about what your client may be thinking, going through, fearing, feeling, or looking forward to. There are so many things that we can address on our websites that are more about our clients and not necessarily about us. And this section would be a great place to do that. So we have a video here, what it's like to work with Sarah. Here is this button that should go up, <laughs> that should go right about here. And instead of just contacting us, like I prefer to use very conversational language and that will depend on your brand and your ideal client but I prefer the things like, 
hey, do you have any more questions? Click here. Or maybe you're just ready to book and you don't need to read more. Click here. Think about what you would say to someone if you sat down with them at a coffee shop to show them all your work and they're like, yeah, we don't want to see your work. We're just ready to book. Oh, well, if you want to do that, let's go through the process. Think about being more conversational and open your website up to that position in your brand as an employee. Your website should be your top performing employee in your business. It should be the best piece of your team. So we have information about high school seniors with a call to action, which is perfect. Families, which is awesome. That we have another call to action. Still missing that one at the top though. Um, another video, which is good. Here's more we's. <laughs> we stand for, um, I tend to think that this should be more in the about section, but you can keep it on your homepage. It's not hurting anything. I would just say, leave out some we's. So where it says, we stand for you. Our primary goal is to make you feel drop dead gorgeous. Um, I would just take this out, take out the, we stand for you. Our primary goal is to make you feel drop dead gorgeous. If you want to bold something, I would bold that. We stand for real tangible photographs. Um, so the way that you could say that it would be, you should walk away with real tangible photographs. Um, we stand for keeping it real. Life isn't always easy. It's not always sparkles and unicorns. We know this firsthand and can relate. Uh, we stand for, sorry, I'm doing this off the cuff. We stand for making you feel absolutely beautiful. Um, we're here to empower you. You deserve an experience to feel completely empowered and beautiful just as you are right now. So those are ways to kind of change that up. We stand for editing photos. So you can talk about all this. You can leave it on the homepage. It's not hurting anything. Um, but the homepage has a lot of information. It could be potentially overwhelming to someone, but it's a good thing to have that text there from an SEO perspective. So our style more weave, <laughs> but, um, I think that's great information. We have the senior and family information and their contact us. We need to put one up there features and accolades, which is wonderful. And we have a footer down here. This kind of seems a little out of place. Um, probably just cause it's not horizontally laid out like the others are. Um, but it's again, not a deal breaker at all. The chat with us um, is formilla.com. I have not um, sent you any information. I haven't tried this, but my only concern would be only offer this chat with us if you can realistically respond very, very quickly. Because with chat, people expect an immediate response. Otherwise, they would fill out a contact form. So I wouldn't have that there unless you respond very, very quickly. And perhaps you do. And that's totally cool. I just, I have not, um, tried to contact you via that chat. So next page is going to be the contact page and contact page looks beautiful. I love that we have some photos here. Um, contact page is another opportunity and a lot of people miss out on this because they want to keep it super simple, which is great. But below the fold, you also have an SEO opportunity as well. Um, and I see that we have a keyword here, but if we don't have 300 words minimum with some decent information where it's readable, then the keyword is kind of just keyword stuffing. So that could potentially be a problem. I love that you have fill out the contact form or call because a lot of people don't give someone an alternate way to contact you. And then if your contact form doesn't work, you are screwed <laughs> and they can't get a hold of you. So I love that. Um, for me personally, I hate to call people, so I would love to have an email address here as well, but that is just my own personal preference. You really need to, to decide that based on your ideal client. So we have full name, email address, phone number, best time to call, what type of photos you want. Um, so this is kind of a long form. I would probably take out a few of these options. So when it comes to what high school someone attends. If someone's not interested in senior portraits, first of all, this is a required field. So it might turn them off. You need to make it as easy as possible for someone to contact you like super, super, super easy because people are lazy. So I would probably take off 
Um, the school, I would probably take this off because you don't need to know that until someone actually contacts you and books you. Um, it's unnecessary at this point in the game. Um, why are you interested in working with us? I would probably take this out. Are you interested in a session for you or someone else? Someone will tell you that. Um, and if they don't, then you can always ask that. Have you had professional photos taken before? I would also remove that from the contact form. Questions or comments do you have? That one can stay. How did you hear about us can stay. Just make it super, super, super simple for someone to contact you because the harder you make it, the more that you require, the less likely someone is going to be to actually contact you. All right, the about page. Um, love this photo of you. It is very warm and inviting and it is a professional photo. Um, well, I assume it is. It definitely doesn't look like an iPhone photo. But that is something that is such a huge bonus because people want to know who they're working with. And you have a ton of information on here, which is fabulous because again, that text matters. I love that you have a contact us um, form on your about page, which is super important. However, I would also put something like right here, right underneath this first paragraph because you don't want someone to have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to contact you. And again, even clicking here, put it in front of them, make it super, super, super obvious how someone can get a hold of you, how they can book with you, how they can work with you. So, oh, sorry, they're landscaping outside. The dog is going to go nuts. Um, she says, Hey, beautiful. I'm Sarah. I'm a professional high end portrait photographer and goes into more information. I love your time is precious. Um, you value photographs, your experience with us. This is definitely more customer centric, which is great. Um, I would look at your, um, in my kick ass about page formula, talk about more about what they're thinking of, because obviously when someone is looking for a photographer, they value photographs and memories. That's kind of a given. Um, otherwise they wouldn't be looking right. So talk about what they're going through. What are they feeling right now? What are they thinking? What is important to them right now? And if you want to specialize in seniors, um, man, you really want to hit someone. You have to first consider if you are talking to the senior or the parent, but if you're talking to the parent in this page, you really want to hit someone, hit them in the heart, man, because I'm telling you, I have a 15 year old boy. And if someone tells me he's going to be gone soon, like, look, it makes me cry now. <laughs> so talk to someone like that. Sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm such a dork. Talk to someone like that and say, you are looking at a huge transition in your life. Having your kid move out, you have poured 18 years of your life into another human being. And now they're going to move on, which is a beautiful thing. And you did a great job, mom. So let's capture that before you send them off into the world. Like think about those things. Obviously they photograph photo or obviously they value photographs and memories. Obviously we're going to make your experience great, but this is about you. The about page is not about your services. This is about you, what you have to offer. And it's your chance to really make a connection with the person that's viewing this information. So more information personally, this is again, nitpicky. I don't think anyone cares about like macro photography or auto mode and stuff like that. And manual mode, multiple lenses, flashes, like, eh. You'd have to ask your ideal client and ask someone like what they really think. But personally, I don't think they care. Um, some of this information is good because it's a little more about you, but I would really, really start to focus on who you're talking to and think about what they're going through and how you can connect with them to share that experience. Because if you can reach out and touch someone's heart, that is why they will book you. And so many photographers are competing in this race for cost. And Sarah, I know that you know better than that. So I'm not talking about you specifically, but when you can touch someone's heart, cost is irrelevant because all of a sudden they want to work with you. It doesn't matter what the cost is. So something to think about seniors, we have a senior gallery, which is beautiful to videos. If you really want me to be nitpicky, they're slightly off. I don't know why. It's probably just a little enter, a, a matter of spacing. See how this one's lower than this one. Um, the experience. I love that you talk about what the experience looks like and what's included in that. 
um, more text, more information, which is great. Again, the contact form is all the way down at the bottom, but here you do have a little button. It is a little bit below the fold. I think part of that could be that your header is kind of large. So see this space, actually it's not even the header, it's the heading um, title for the page. So see how the title starts like here and comes down to here. It's kind of big, but again, not a, not a deal breaker. It's not a big deal. So families, love the family gallery. And when we scroll down again, we're talking about the experience, which is perfect. Contact Sarah now. I would put that closer to the gallery. Do not make someone work to contact you. If a mom is looking for family photos, chances are she has kids at home, she's busy, she's got kind of a crazy life. Giving her the opportunity to contact you fast and easy is always a bonus for moms. All right, and there are more. Availability, it looks like with Google Calendar. Um, so the only, here's the potential issue that I could see with availability is if I am a mom and I need to get senior photos done now, and you know that this is senior season and you are going to, you could move mountains to make it work. Like right here, I see that there's nothing here, but does that mean that it's open? Does that mean that I can book that? Does that mean that you have a personal thing that day? I don't know what any of this calendar means. So booked, I don't know. Does that mean that you absolutely cannot take any more that day? Does that mean that if I'm willing to buy your biggest package, you'll make an exception? I don't really love having the availability open without someone actually starting a conversation with you first especially if you're willing to work with someone. It just can be very confusing for a client. Um, and I don't really know like what, what to consider. What if I really, really want this date? What if I'm only in town on this one day and I see that it's booked, but if I contacted you, you would have made an exception that, I mean, and again, if you never make exceptions, that's not a problem. But if you do sometimes, because I know, for instance, I don't usually work with clients on the weekends. I open one weekend a month to work with clients, but if they really need that day, I'll work with them. So for that reason, I don't necessarily want to share my calendar on my website because if they see that I'm booked or that I'm not available on that date, then they'll go to the next photographer. And if they really want to work with me, I want to give them every opportunity to do so. So I don't love having an availability calendar on a website for that reason. However, if you really love it and really want it to be there, then it's not a deal breaker. It's not a huge deal. Um, this is the welcome guide. This is a beautifully done welcome guide. I am curious why you have it embedded on your website and available to anyone instead of making that an opt-in for email marketing. Girl, get in my email marketing class because seriously, this is a killer welcome guide. And I would also consider this welcome guide being completely accessible means that someone could book with a different photographer and get all of your tips and tricks, which is not necessarily the way we want to go, right? So this could either be an opt-in for someone that is choosing to work with you, or it could also be when someone books their session, this is the before and after and the full tips and tricks and all that good stuff. So I'm kind of wondering why it's fully accessible on your website. If that's how you want to do it, again, you know I'm a big fan of your business, your rules. However, I think that this is a killer resource that you could definitely do a little more with, whether it's an opt-in or clients booked, all that good stuff. All right, meet the team. Love this. I love that you have a fancy photo and then a fun photo. We have information, editing, video. Perfect. I love that. I think that that's very well done. Giving back. Love this information as well. I'm going to go to client love before I go to blog. 
I love testimonials. The one thing that I would caution you on is this format is a little difficult to read. I don't know which picture goes with which person, um, but it's still readable. So again, not a deal breaker, but there are a few that are on the left that could have been put on the right. It's just, again, very nitpicky in the format, uh, very minor, but definitely something to think about. And then under blog, Oh, there's the opt-in. See? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Dogs. So there's the opt-in. So you have an opt-in. So that brings me to my next question. Why don't you have a page for that? Girl, get that on a page. Get it on your homepage. Get it everywhere on your website so that you can start to grow that list because that list is so, so, so valuable when it comes to marketing and reaching out to people that you already know are interested in hearing from you. So you have the opt-in, which is great. I didn't see it until I got to your blog page, which is pretty far into your website. If someone doesn't get to your blog page, how are they going to opt in? And I know that people think that it's annoying, but really it's just an X. It's not that big of a deal. And the fact is that those pop-ups have huge conversion rates when they're well done and they're closable no one really cares. So here we have the blog, senior features, senior photos, beautiful. And then we have another senior shot behind the scenes. And then if I click on that, that's the full post. So I like that your blog is well done. The photos are well done. They're all centered, which makes them super easy to see. I hate it when people try to do these pretty like collages and stuff and it just doesn't work very well. Um, so they're all very easy to see. The one thing that I might give you feedback on is to have something that shows articles that someone can click on without having to scroll. So for instance, right now, under this senior feature, I have to scroll through almost the entire article to see a different article. So then we have this feature and then I have to scroll some more. Whereas with other blog things, or other blog pages, I should say, and now it won't load. Come on, man. Let's try this. Everything's going a little slow today. Whereas with other blog pages, they actually show you um, a page. So if I click on my blog page, you can see that it's a layout where I can see several articles at once and kind of a thumbnail of them instead of having to go through the entire article to see the next one. So then I can click specifically on what I want to see. So something to consider, again, not a deal breaker, not a huge deal, but something to think about. And overall, I think your website is very, very well done. I'm curious if you've, have, have, if you've had any feedback from ideal clients and see what they think, um, because you wanna make sure that it's super easy for them, because one thing that I tend to get into is that I know how the web works and I understand what websites are supposed to look like. So something may be obvious to me, but it's not to my ideal client. And I spend a lot of time asking them and they're more than happy to give their feedback. People want to know that their opinions matter, right? So um, I spend a lot of time asking them, hey, do you think that this menu looks okay? Does it seem like it flows to you? And usually only a couple of people will respond. It's not like I have a thousand responses but those responses matter. So overall, I love your website. I love the way that it's laid out. There aren't any major things that I would fix, just a lot of small things that will make it a little easier to navigate and will speak directly to someone instead of speaking about yourself. So I hope that makes sense. Have an amazing day. And if you have any questions, let me know.